One local mother's last ditch effort now underway in her fight to avoid deportation. Residents in a state of uncertainty after a fire erupted at their national city apartment complex. And the future of electric vehicles on display today at the San Diego International Auto Show. 10 News Midday starts now. 10 News begins with breaking news. Well, that breaking news, a crash left a car teetering over the eastbound 94. I'm Derek Stahl. I'm Virginia Cha. We have some new video for you from just within this last hour. This is near Mount Hope. You see the car right there. Witnesses say a truck collided with that car, pushing it up against the K-rail. You see the tire on top of it there. This is the westbound 94 to the 15 south off ramp. Two people do have some minor injuries and they were taken to a hospital. A military mom is at a hearing right now waiting to find out if she will be deported today. 10 News reporter Marie Cornell is live downtown where her family and friends held a rally and they are hoping for a miracle, Marie. Yeah, Virginia, Rocio Gomez already has orders to be deported, but she's hoping during this hearing that something changes and that she'll be allowed to stay in the United States. <laughs> Muy triste la separación. In tears, Rocio made a tearful plea, surrounded by her family and friends, begging ICE to show her leniency and overturn the decision to deport her to Mexico. Rocio has been in the country for more than 30 years. Though she came into the country illegally, her family says she spent years trying to fix things legally, but her efforts have been denied. Her son even joined the military, hoping to help his mom's situation. It's a hard feeling having to say goodbye to my mother, putting her in danger, especially when we've given up so much for this country. And at this moment, I have to hand her off to uh, ICE so that they can deport her to a place where I can't, I can't go due to uh, restrictions uh, because of the military. This morning, we also learned uh, that someone spray painted a hate message on the family's property last night. So they're dealing with that. Aside from what's happening at this hearing, uh, we have been in contact with a spokesperson for the family. And as soon as we hear any updates, we'll let you know. Live from downtown, Marie Coronel, 10 News. Marie, thanks. New this midday, a fire at an El Cajon storage yard left some vehicles smoldering. It happened around 7 this morning off of Hamishaw Way. Firefighters say it all started on a boat that was being stored there at the property, and then it quickly spread to three other cars nearby. Crews were able to put it out a short time later. Nobody was hurt. The cause of the fire is under investigation. This is happening today. The Oceanside doctor convicted of sexually assaulting patients is expected to come face to face with some of them in court. Dr. Edgar Manzanara pleaded guilty in September. Now, as part of his plea deal, he will serve three years probation, give up his medical license, and will have to register as a sex offender. Prosecutors say Manzanara performed unnecessary gynecological exams and touched women inappropriately. Some former patients will give victim impact statements at his sentencing today. Overnight, an employee at Winchell's Donuts in National City got pistol whipped during an attempted robbery. A witness tells 10 News he was about to go into the donut shop on East Plaza Boulevard when he saw a man inside hitting one of the clerks. You see the clerk right there. The witness says he then saw the suspect run out and escape in a red van. Police got there. They determined the man was trying to take the cash register when he hit that clerk with a pistol. The guy got away. The clerk was taken to a hospital with a head injury. Some National City families still unsure of when they'll be able to return to their home. Some of them had to flee when a fire broke out yesterday. It happened yesterday afternoon at the Chateau Gardens apartment complex. An electrical fire erupted, leading to some pretty scary moments for residents. I opened my door and checked and I saw that like thick uh, smoke in the hallway. So I ran, I was so nervous. I don't know what to get first. The electrical damage caused by that fire is one of the reasons why they've been forced out of their homes. A couple dozen people, the apartment owner and the Red Cross, work to get them into hotel rooms, and it's unclear how long they'll have to stay there before they can return home. 
Now to the fallout in Iraq. After two days of chaos at the American Embassy in Baghdad, an Iranian-backed militia and the protesters who support them have retreated, but the U.S. military has sent in hundreds of reinforcements to the region, and American officials say they are prepared to defend U.S. personnel and facilities if necessary. ABC's Treasure, Trevor Alt has the latest. Tensions remain high in Iraq. Following a violent siege on the American embassy in Baghdad, hundreds of U.S. troops have arrived in the Middle East. Apache helicopters sending warning flares and later Marines firing tear gas into the crowds of protesters who stormed the embassy Tuesday. The Iranian-backed militia and their supporters angry over U.S. airstrikes they say killed 25 militia members. Those airstrikes launched in response to a rocket attack by that same militia group which killed a U.S. contractor. The angry crowd shouting, down, down America, throwing rocks, spraying anti-American graffiti, and setting fire to rooftops and guard posts. While the protesters have since retreated, thousands more American troops are on standby to possibly deploy to the region. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper telling Fox News. We respect Iraq's sovereignty. But at the same time, we're going to defend ourselves and our interests and our people in, in Baghdad. President Trump laying the blame for the violence on Iran, tweeting the country will pay a very big price. This is not a warning. It is a threat. But the president still insisting he doesn't want war. I don't think that would be a good idea for Iran. It wouldn't last very long. Uh, do I want to? No. I want to have peace. I like peace. The U.S. Embassy in Baghdad put out a statement Wednesday saying it will be closed until further notice and said any Americans in the area should not even approach the building. Trevor Ault, ABC News, New York. A 4.0 magnitude earthquake shook the L.A. area this morning. Its epicenter was in the ocean near Ventura County. The U.S. Geological Survey says that earthquake struck about 2.13 this morning near Port Wyneme. People felt light shaking in areas as far away as Irvine and Santa Barbara. So far, there are no reports of any damage. The Ocean Beach Pier will stay closed for a third day because of high surf, and ocean swells are expected to increase through the week. According to the National uh, Weather Service, the biggest waves are going to be at beaches that face between west and northwest. The high surf conditions are expected to subside, though, by early Saturday. The doors to the San Diego International Auto Show are open. Hundreds of people already inside the convention center to look at some pretty sweet rides. Tenue reporter Nate Holmes joining us live from the showroom. Nate, part of today's theme there is helping keep San Diego clean. That's right. It's EV or electric vehicle day, and we are at the uh, SDG&E exhibit booth, and they are showing visitors how simple it is use electric cars. Now, SDG&E says not only are we seeing more and more models of electric cars, it's becoming a penny saver for many who have them. If you are charging your electric vehicle at home on one of our EV pricing plans, it's comparable to fueling up for about 75 cents per gallon of gasoline. Electric stations are set up showing visitors how easy it is to charge up and go. And what people don't know is a lot of the affordable models here, the full battery electric, have a range of over 300 miles on a full battery charge. That's enough to get to LA and back. Many new models don't look like your average EV or hybrid vehicles. This is the all new 2020 Honda CRV Hybrid. But what's really cool is the CRV hybrid actually has a 50% increase in fuel economy city compared to the non hybrid version of the CRV. And if you're going for a more sportier look, this is the Toyota Mirai. So this is our hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. It runs on hydrogen. There's no plug and it's all electric and the only emission is water vapor. The auto show has a little something for everyone. Not only do you get to see and touch these vehicles, you get to experience what it's like being on the road. Camp Jeep for us, to really experience a Jeep, you have to know what it can do. For those who like the look of luxury cars without breaking the bank, the 2020 Corvette Stingray is here waiting for you. Mid-engine supercar, 495 horsepower, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. Those are performance exotic car numbers, and that's what this car is all about. Now you can also come out to the auto show and test drive some of the models. Doors are open until 9 p.m. and the show runs until Sunday. Live at the Convention Center, Nate Holmes, 10 News. Hanging out with the Porsche. I like your style, Nate. Wild weather causing dangerous driving conditions in the Pacific Northwest. In one case, burying cars in tumbleweeds.
and remembering a baseball legend with strong ties to San Diego. And it will be sunny and dry today. I'll pinpoint the temperatures as we head into the first weekend of 2020. Now let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Jim Betancourt. Hey there, Jim. And hello to you and everybody watching this midday right now. For those of you who are going to be traveling on the 94, like they talked about earlier in the newscast, this crash still has that uh, transition road shut down there from the westbound 94 to the southbound 15 connector. So watch out for that if you're traveling through there. We do have another crash on the northbound side of the five right near Lucadia, a little slow through that area as well. I'm Officer Jim Betancourt with your 10 News Time Saver Traffic. Some pretty dangerous conditions on roads in certain places around the country. So take a look at this. This is a snow plow. You can see the plow up here. And this looks like piles of snow in Washington State, but it's not. These are tumbleweeds. Crews spent hours removing those tumbleweeds from this highway on New Year's Eve. Look at the truck, the car stuck in there. Some of these drivers were stuck on New Year's Eve and they had to ring in the New Year while they waited for help. In Colorado near the Wyoming border, this Amazon truck driver lost control. You can see when a strong gust of wind hit, you can see the truck sliding into the oncoming lanes of traffic, but at least no one was seriously hurt. Raging wildfires in Australia could be on the verge of getting even worse. The weather calmed down for a short time, but it's expected to pick back up, making for dangerous conditions. ABC's Maggie Ruley is in Australia with the latest. A week-long state of emergency has been declared here in New South Wales, Australia. Authorities believe conditions are just going to worsen into the weekend. Uh, firefighters here were able to get out today. We saw some more favorable conditions. Crews here tell us that they were able to contain a large fire that was just up the road, even stopping it from jumping across a busy street. They said the goal today was uh, containment, again, getting ahead of those flames because we're expecting even hotter temperatures and high winds this weekend. Now, uh, these fires, as they're expected to get worse, have already done so much damage here in New South Wales and really across the country. Uh, we're seeing more than 200 fires in two of Australia's most populated states. Uh, these fires have caused the deaths of at least 18 people, destroying uh, well over 12,000 homes, and many of them are, are still raging. Again, firefighters are desperate, really working to contain these flames because not only are they affecting uh, homes and people, they're also devastating uh, precious ecosystem here in Australia, important habitats uh, for many species that uh, the world kind of knows as Australia species, things like the koala bear. Uh, we met some of those koalas that uh, were in the burn zones today, including this guy, Paul, who was rescued by a man named Paul. And uh, he was the first actually rescued from these bushfires. He was brought uh, into the koala hospital, which is just north of Sydney. Uh, the researchers there say they were desperate to save him. They actually walk through burn areas looking for koalas like Paul, or sometimes people bring in burned koalas that they found. The good news here is that uh, there working to recover Paul. He is on his way to becoming a healthy koala, uh, but unfortunately they say not all of them are like Paul and now uh, they're desperate to try to save more koalas as they say they fear that uh, after these fires, um, some of them could start being uh, critically endangered or even threaten uh, their species. So a huge concern here is the wildlife as well. Again, we're looking towards those conditions this weekend uh, that are expecting to worsen, but uh, we'll keep following them here in New South Wales. Again, this is Maggie Ruley for ABC News in Australia. Australia. Well, the baseball world is mourning the death of a local pitcher who is the only Major League Baseball player to pitch a perfect game in the World Series. Don Larson accomplished that feat in 1956 while playing for the New York Yankees. In a statement, the team said Larson's perfect game was a defining moment for that franchise and a reminder of the unforgettable things that can happen on a baseball field. Larson was born in Indiana but moved to San Diego when he was 13 and he played at Point Loma High. He died after a battle with esophageal cancer. Don Larson was 90 years old. How an Uber driver's chance encounter gave her a second chance at finishing her college degree. And later, looking back at the legacy of late NBA commissioner David Stern. A former Uber driver in Atlanta says her dream of a college degree had to be put on hold. That is until one of her passengers surprised her with a little help. Yeah, Latanya Young is a 43 year old single mom. One day she says she picked up a passenger, a passenger by the name of Kevin Ash, and they started talking about how she had to drop out of college all because of a $700 unpaid balance. Well, she says a few days later, she got a phone call that changed her life. And the message stated, okay, you're all set. You can register for classes now. 
And I was like, literally, I was blown away because a stranger has never done that or done anything like that for me. Yeah, Ash went ahead and paid off the balance so Latanya could go back to school. He even attended her graduation. You can see the photo right there. Latanya has now earned an associate's degree in criminal justice, and this month she's going to be back in class to pursue a bachelor's degree. This 10 News Pinpoint Weather Report is sponsored by Anderson Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Nobody wows clients like we do. That is the feel-good story. Yeah, talk yeah. about a life-changing impact right? like that. Right? Really changed $700. the course. $700. Yes. Oh, there really are good people here in this world. That is great to see. Well, here at home, happy Thursday to you. As we take you outside to our sky cams across the county, we are seeing mostly sunny skies here during midday. Right now we're in the 50s in Julian, 60s in Poway, Escondido, in the upper 50s in El Cajon, and along our coastline, we're seeing a lot of low to near the mid 60s. Now keep in mind again, if you are heading out to the beaches, yes, the water looks nice. However, we do still have that high surf advisory in effect here right now. Surf is between four to five feet, but it could be as high as nine feet with local sets up to 10. So this high surf advisory is going to last here through early Saturday morning. Something to watch out for if you are planning to head to our coastline. Now as high pressure continues to build, we're going to start to see those warmer temperatures here over the next couple of days into the weekend and we also have periods of gusty offshore winds this is mostly in our canyon and mountain communities also something to watch out for if that's your destination today your forecast highs for today it is going to be cooler in our mountains low 50s today we'll see the upper 60s in places like Escondido Poway El Cajon mid 60s if you're going to be hanging out in downtown today your seven day forecast so a couple degrees warmer as we look ahead to the weekend along the coast those overnight lows though still pretty chill we're going to be in the 40s. So yeah, bundle up with a blanket or turn on that heater in our inland valleys. As we get into Friday and Saturday, we'll start to see the low 70s. Lots of sunshine in our mountains, although it will be cooler. The deserts here, low 70s today. Guys. Thank you, Mel.